his true identity is revealed. Amid Barack Hussein Obama's opportunity in office, he and Michelle scarcely praised the 4th of July by any means, as they believed they had no motivation to commend this awesome country. That is the reason it came as an unforeseen pleasure this previous week when Donald and Melania Trump celebrated July 4th out of a way that shows they are glad to be Americans. The Trumps truly are putting the Obamas to shame. The charlatan from Kenya that is former President Barack Hussein Obama and his scumbag of a wife who was never proud of her country until the ignorant leftists in the Democrat Party decided it would be a great idea to nominate a non-American to run for president taking heavy criticism after this past 4th of July holiday. While most Americans celebrated the 241st birthday of our United States of America with countless patriotic posts on social media to honor those who made it possible to become independent nation, Barry Soitero and his hoochie mama of a wife are the ones who garnered the most notice. Both the Kenyan and his anti-American wife were 100% silent, without even mentioning our most patriotic of holidays. Michelle Obama was born and raised here. But our new First Lady, Melania Trump, who had not, has more patriotism in one finger than the much has in her whole body. See the difference? Of course, Ma Uchel was extremely proud when her husband was nominated, she saw the opportunity they had coming. Dollar, what do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Freedom Daily caught. It's over for her. Last year, Barack Obama's Attorney General Loretta Lynch was involved into shaping Hillary Clinton's FBI investigation in order to protect the former Democratic presidential candidate. Former FBI James Comey's testimony recently has put the spotlight on Lynch who is now under scrutiny and an investigation is in the process to determine whether she was politically motivated to help Clinton. According to the Washington Times, the Senate Judiciary Committee has just launched an investigation into Lynch's handling of the Clinton probe. The committee sent a letter to Lynch in which it asked her to explain her role and herself involving in the FBI's investigation, including whether she ever assured Clinton confidants that the probe wouldn't push too deeply into the matter. This came after former FBI Director James Comey testified that Lynch tried to shape the way he talked about the investigation into Clinton's emails. He also added that she displayed other behavior which I cannot talk about yet that made him more aware about Lynch's power to make impartial decisions. This was one reason why he took it upon himself to buck Justice Department tradition and reveal his findings about Clinton last year. At one point, Lynch, directed me not to call it an investigation but instead to call it a matter, which confused me and concerned me. That was one of the bricks in the load that led me to conclude I have to step away from the department if we are close this credibly. What are your thoughts on this? Comment section below. Just now. The internet sent into a full-blown frenzy dash mad dog Mattis. President Donald Trump has brought something that will make a big change to the military. After having to deal with administration that didn't seem to have respect for it, that dictated to it or seemed to consider it a cast-off not worthy of attention, the military now has an administration that truly respects it and want to give it its head to be able to achieve the military goals of the United States. And as usual, the liberal media isn't quite happy about this. Liberals are the ones who are as frightened of use of the military just as the previous administration of Obama was. The Washington Post was upset yesterday that Mattis is annihilating the terrorists so effectively. A military policy run solely by the Pentagon creates confusion, writes the Post. The left is upset, and one of these reasons is that having a warrior in charge of fighting a war shows how incompetent and incapable the Obama administration was. The greatness of the concept is that it actually allows the military to do the job that it was trained to do. Also, its reliance is placed upon those who actually know what they are talking about. A principal part of that change, in addition to Trump, is U.S. retired General and Secretary of Defense, James Mattis. Regarding the policy against ISIS, Mattis changed it from one of attrition to one of annihilation. Recently on a Sunday talk show, Mattis stated, We're not the perfect guys, but we are the good guys. 
and so we're doing what we can. Mattis also declared Manchester's tragic loss underscores the purpose of your years of study and training at this elite school. We must never permit murderers to define our time or warp our sense of normal. This is not normal. While speaking to the graduating cadets of the U.S. Military Academy at West Point last month, Mattis said the aim was to take ISIS out where they were in the Middle East, to not allow them to return to wherever they came from. The general said, We have already shifted from attrition tactics, where we shove them from one position to another in Iraq and Syria, to annihilation tactics where we surround them. Our intention is that the foreign fighters do not survive the fight to return home to North Africa to Europe, to America, to Asia, to Africa. We're not going to allow them to do so. We're going to stop them there and take apart the caliphate. Mattis is concentrated on his job to annihilate the enemy. He doesn't believe in providing jobs or worrying about whether or not we will offend people whose primary goal is to kill us. Trump lets him do his job, and he does his job Seconds ago, Melania spoke of Barron. And it's amazing. On Friday, First Lady Melania Trump and Donald Trump were interviewed two weeks ago on Fox and Friends, and they were to keen updating with some great news. Loves it, yes, all settled. He loves it here. Melania and Barron are definitely enjoying their new home, but Barron's already been having some fun. According to the New York Post, one month before they moved in Barron got to take his whole fifth grade class of 80 students on a tour of the White House, where they had lunch and President Trump talked to them about being the best you could be for your country. The interviewer then asked Melania if she's been missing New York City, where her and Barron had been living as he finished up the school year. The First Lady answered, Not really. I'm so busy, and we are doing so many great stuff, so it's really special place. We love it here. And we love to hear that. What's your thoughts on this? Comment section below. Shocking Hillary Crony's Russian ties revealed. Look where dirty money trail lead. Certain names keep flying up in the news with at any rate some association with conceivably odious activities amid the last campaign. Given that Hillary Clinton was a candidate, individuals can be pardoned for accepting the most noticeably bad. All things considered, she is not the individual to swing to when searching for help in building up moral principles for those in government. We are presently around eight months since the presidential election was closed, and banners about keep with respect to the claimed obstruction by the Russians, political moves by the previous executive of the FBI and lawyer general, and in addition a group of web-related and hacking allegations. Investigations are continuous and some may really deliver comes about in spite of the fact that those outcomes won't be what some were anticipating. John Podesta, Hillary's battle director, has figured out how to stay in people in general spotlight, in spite of the fact that it's not by any stretch of the imagination sure that he wishes to. Maybe he might simply want to backpedal to doing whatever administrators of fizzled presidential campaigns do. That is not prone to occur for his situation things being what they are by Mr. Podesta who had associations with Russian interests and occupied with impressive money-related exchanges with them. With all the consideration the media and Democrats have concentrated on President Trump, so far without much of any result, this could be colossal. The New York Post reports, lawmakers failed to seize on an alarming development in the Russian collusion story last week which should spark serious and immediate congressional inquiry. But it did not involve President Trump or his administration. During a heated Fox Business interview with Maria Bartiromo, Hillary Clinton's former campaign chief John Podesta made a series of misleading statements when asked about his involvement in a company that received $35 million from the Russian government while Hillary served as state secretary. On January 18, 2011, and a small green energy company named Jewel Unlimited announced the appointment of Podesta to its board. Months later, Rosnano, a Kremlin-backed investment fund, founded by Vladimir Putin, pumped $35 million into Jewel. Serving alongside Podesta on Jewel's board were senior Russian official Anatoly Chubai and oligarch Ruben Vardanyan, who has been appointed by Putin to a Russian Economic Modernization Council. 
that is something beyond an easygoing association with Russian organizations, influence representatives, cash, and lawmakers. Maybe Mr. Podesta trusts that Russia just drops out of American vocabulary for some time. In any occasion, the accompanying passage from this meeting will bring into fresh concentration the reason he was chosen by Hillary as her campaign manager, they both have aced the specialty of needing the certainties by making articulations that, while in fact genuine, are intentionally deceptive. Observe, Bartiromo asked Podesta why he failed to disclose his role in Jula's required by law when he entered the White House in January 2014 to serve as a counselor to President Barack Obama. Maria. That's not true. I fully disclosed and was completely compliant, Podesta shot back. But according to his own financial disclosure form, Podesta only listed two of the three entities that made up Jewel Unlimited, failing to disclose his presence on the board of the Dutch registered Stichting Jewel Global Foundation. When Bartiromo pressed Podesta on the whereabouts of his 75,000 shares of Jewel stock, Podesta resorted to Clinton esque semantics. I did not have any stock in any Russian company. Notice the rhetorical slight of the tongue there, Jewel is based in Massachusetts, not Russia, making Podesta's statement technically true. Podesta added, and by the way, I divested before I went into the White House. This gets a mess more tangled than we can ever cover here, so how about we get to the primary concern? In short, Clinton's top campaign chief and senior advisor to Obama sat on Jewel's board alongside top Russian officials as Putin's Kremlin-backed investment fund funneled $35 million into Jewel. No one looking at the Podesta fact pattern can claim to care about rooting out Russian collusion and not rigorously investigating the tangle of relationships. Anyway, to the Democrats and others on the left we ask, do you truly need an entire, genuine, free, an exhaustive investigation concerning anybody and any impacts American that may have addressed Russia in the past race? Or, on the other hand, would you lean toward just to lead a witch chase against President Trump? What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Briet Bart, in Wipe. Game Changer President Trump just made breaking announcement about the border wall, Mexico furious. You truly need to hand it to the leftist media. They are totally limited focused concentrated on Mexico and the border wall. Nothing gets the fake news factories to interrupt more than Trump and his kept moving forward with plans to build the border wall and stop illicit migration in its tracks. One of the least demanding approaches to realize that the border wall will do precisely what its backers say it will do is to simply tune into the liberal grapples and their steady whimpering about how this divider will be incapable, excessively costly, and will do only separate relatives from their friends and family. It is really one of the uncommon circumstances that you'll hear a liberal whining about an excess of cash being spent. At the G20 conference, Trump met interestingly with Mexican President Benito and they talked about NAFTA, exchange, and the border wall. Whenever Trump and Nito were strategically placed at their mix for the public interview, one of the primary inquiries out of the mouth of the press was, Mr. Trump, are you still insisting that Mexico pays for the wall? Trump's answer was unequivocal. Absolutely. Independent Journal Review, after the meeting. Trump and President Pinanito held a short press event where Trump was asked, Mr. Trump, do you still want Mexico to pay for the wall? The president responded, absolutely. The event ended shortly after that. Trump and Pinanito were meeting in Germany at the G20 summit happening today. Trump said that during the meeting the two leaders discussed trade policy, specifically NAFTA renegotiations. The president said they made a very good progress. Pinanito also mentioned NAFTA saying, I'm sure this will help us to continue a great flowing dialogue that will allow for the negotiations of NAFTA. A standout amongst the most stunning things about this border wall business is that a majority of Americans trust that it must be constructed and that, regardless of the possibility that the legislature chooses that the expenses may be restrictive, citizens have respected a chance to pay for the wall regardless of the possibility that it implies private donations.
that is the means by which extraordinary this level-headed discussion is and just demonstrates that as much as the liberal press drives you by the nose to trust that most Americans are against his structure, it's recently not upheld. A significant part of the exit surveying a year ago demonstrated that the issues on which Donald Trump stood were the positions that got him choose. With respect to the leader of Mexico, there's truly very little he can do to abstain from paying for this wall. At the point when all is said and done, the renegotiations with both Mexico and Canada on this loathsome North Atlantic Free Trade Agreement will be intended for evening the odds amongst us and them. Some portion of that leveling will be the appended reminder that guarantees that Mexico takes care of everything for the wall. What do you think about this? Do not hesitate and write your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you for reading. H. T. Independent Journal